so in this in this point, um, so Imam Busiri becomes paralyzed, and he becomes remorseful. He wants to repent. So what he does is he writes a poem, and in this poem, he doesn't just write a poem saying Astaghfirullah, I seek forgiveness from you, Allah. He laments his condition. So we can take you to the Purda in the chapters. It's ten chapters. So in the first chapter, he talks about his his state of the lament and complaint of love. Right? That's chapter one. I my state of being now is that I feel remorseful, all I want to turn to you, and I've neglected the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu So in the poem, he, he now regrets the fact that he's had all this companionship, he's been around so much people, and he's still not learned his lesson. So he's complaining of his, his and, he, and he puts forward his heart, really. And he says, you know, I mean, my love is, you know, something that I'm trying to uh, control, but I can't control it. And he talks about that in the first chapter. The chapter is here called Canto, right? And cantos are basically a section of a poem. Simply put, um, chapter two or Canto two is cautioning against egoistic desires. So he now talks about his own sort of journey of his nafs. The nafs is the ego, the egoistic self, right? The one that wants to do things and eat and drink and enjoy life and have luxury and entertainment. Uh, so he talks about that how he followed his ego during his earlier life and how you should control it. So he gives you as advice. Like I said, Imam Busiri became a spiritual master, he became a great person. So he's actually, there's plenty of advice in that section as well. And then he moves on. So, you know, the beautiful thing is he doesn't even talk about the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam directly for about 30 lines of poetry, maybe even more. In chapter 3, he starts to praise the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So you realize his love is for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. His, you know, his, his wronging himself and his being falling short is against the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So he talks about that. Zalam to Sunnata. Man I wronged the sunnah. He even says it. I zulm to. I did zulm on myself because I did zulm to the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, the one who spent all night in prayer. Zulm to sunnah. Man He made the night come to life in this prayer. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So he praises the Prophet ﷺ. That's where the famous lines are: Muhammadun Sayyidul Kawnaini wa Thaqalaini wa Fariqaini min Orbin wa min Ajami. Um, so that's the famous line in that chapter three. And that's in praise. And he mentions the Prophet ﷺ by name. In the chapter 3. Then he starts to praise the Prophet. So he wants to do repentance, he wants to turn to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but he's going through the door of the Messenger of Allah. So he's praising the Messenger of Allah, and in chapter 9 and 10, he's going to seek the intercession of the Prophet. He's going to take the approach to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through the intermediary of the Prophet, the wasila of the Prophet to present before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to ask for forgiveness which we should all do and we learn how to do that inshallah ta'ala but he praises him first so he starts off from his blessed birth and the miraculous nature of his birth so chapter 4 is on the the, the mawlid as we know it the milad or the wilada to the nabi sallallahu alayhi wasallam chapter 5 then is the miracles of the prophet so now he talks about the prophet and his miracles during his young age later on the spitting of the moon is, uh, and, and so forth that he, him curing people with his touch alayhi salatu wasalam and two miracles he speaks about in particular, two of the greatest honors and signs of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. One, the Quran, of course. So chapter six, he talks about the Quran and praises the Quran, the glory of the Quran and the, the miraculous nature of the Quran. And then second of all, the Isra wal Mi'raj. In the month, which, in which month did that occur? In Rajab, what month are we in now? Rajab, right? So the month of Isra al Miraj this month. So the Isra al Miraj, the journey to Jerusalem, the Isra and the Miraj, the ascension through the heavens, uh, the night journey and ascension of the Prophet. And then he mentions the jihad, the struggle of the Prophet and the companions. He praises the companions in this, in this section. So the Prophet, the companions, their struggles for Islam, how they gave us Islam and how we owe them so much that we are Muslims. This is a beautiful section on that. And then he turns to the Prophet, he does his tawbah here. So in chapter 9, he starts his tawbah. He starts his, what he calls istiqala. Istiqala means to seek a pardon, to seek like cancellation of you know what you've done, like oh forgive that, to wipe off the debts and kind of istiqala it's called. He says a beautiful line of poetry in there. He says, how can I be worried on the day of judgment when I've got a contract, an agreement with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? You know what his agreement is? I've got the same name as the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because I'm called Muhammad, Muhammad ibn Sa'id, and he's called Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Khalas, that's enough. How can he do wrong to somebody who's got his name? Alayhi salatu wasalam. So we talk about the blessing of the name Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam and we come to that section, inshallah ta'ala. And finally, 
it says obfuscations and presenting needs, i.e. seeking forgiveness. So in the end, he finally says, Oh Allah, that who, who is there to help me? Who can I turn to except to the door of your messenger, Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Please forgive, please cancel out, please give me sabr, please give me guidance. And the final line is actually to send continuous prayers and salutations upon the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam.